Hi folks, well, one way to think of working on your photos here in Photoshop is to almost think about it as a home improvement project. So, let's say you've got a drill, and it's got one little drill bit on it. Well, you can do some projects with that one little that drill and that one little drill bit, but eventually you're going to run out of things to do, and you'll find you can do things better if you have more tools. Well, let's say you've got one of those monster drills that does everything from sawing to sanding to cutting to drilling, you name it, it does it. Well, then you can do more things uh, to your home improvement projects. Same thing goes true with your photos. There are tools that do certain things here in Photoshop, but Curves is one of those tools that does a lot of things, and we get a lot more control over what we do. So uh, let's take a look here. I've got just a very simple gradient image here, and we're going to take a look at a photo in a moment. But what I want to do, let's go to my color sampler tool. And I'm going to drop, all I did was create a black, a white to black gradient right here. And this is the exact center. I'm going to drop down a sample point. And then I'm going to drop another one down right up here in the top corner. Now, what I've done here is I dropped a sample point down where it was white and one up here where it's black. And if you look over in the info palette, 255 is all the way down. That means sample point number one is white. Zeros means it's number two is all black. So th I, I like to create these gradient images when I want to figure out what a tool is doing here in Photoshop. And this is a good example for curves. So let's go take a look to our layers palette. We'll go to curves. And we're going to look at a photo in just a moment. But let's take a look here. And if you don't see this grid, if you see this grid instead, uh, hold down your Alt key on the PC, Option on the Mac, and just click inside of the grid. And you see the more detailed one. It doesn't change the way curves works. I just I kind of like it better this way. Now, what we're going to do here is let's take and I'm going to you know what I want to see my info palette. So I'm going to drag this guy over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom left point and I'm going to start dragging it. I'm going to drag it upward and watch the image. See how the image becomes see all those really dark dark colors start to become gray. Well. This point of the curve, this point of the line, everything that's down in this corner is going to be your shadow areas. Everything that's up in this corner is going to be your highlight area. So what we're doing here is we're telling Photoshop, see that gradient that follows our curve along here? Right now it's all black. And I'm telling Photoshop, take everything that's all black and everything in between and make them all this medium gray color. And if I were to drag this all the way up to the top, I'm telling Photoshop, now make everything white. So you can see what's happening here. But here's one thing to keep an eye on. Let's look at what we're affecting here. Look at the number one color dropper here. No matter what I do as I drag this up, I'm not affecting my highlights. I'm affecting the darker colors. And you can see that here. That's no longer zero. That's becoming higher and higher as I go up because I'm, I'm making it whiter and whiter. All right, And the same thing works in reverse. Take a look at the color samples. As I drop this side down, you're going to see the black, which is on the outskirts here, because now look at the gradient. See the gradient is white up here, so as I drag it down, I'm going to tell Photoshop, take all these, these white and these, these light gray areas and make them black. But I'm not messing with the blacks. All right, So you're going to see my number one color sampler point. That one's going to start changing here. All right, see, it's going to get lower and lower until eventually all those whites become black. Okay. Now, another thing to look at here is let's take a look at the mid area. So this is our shadows down here. This is our highlights all the way up here. What's all this area in the middle? This is the midtones. These are our mid gray areas. And watch what happens here. This gets really interesting. I want you to keep an eye on number one and number two eyedropper points over here. As I click on the curve and I start to bow it outward, look at those points. See, they're not changing. They won't start changing until I get some really crazy results here. But for the most part, see, they're not changing because I'm not, look, I'm not actually moving the extreme shadows or the extreme highlights. So by moving the curve upward, I'm making the mid-gray areas and most of, most of your photos will be in the mid-gray areas. I'm making these mid-gray areas, I'm making them lighter. All right? And by moving it downward, let's dismiss this for a second here. And by moving it downward, I'm making them darker. All right? 
but you can see my color points are still staying exactly the same. My highlight point and my shadow point have not changed. It's only the mid gray area. So everything up here makes it lighter. Everything down here makes it darker. All right, so now let's take a look at a photo. And we'll open up this photograph here, and we'll go back into curves, and we'll see what it's doing to our photo. So remember, as I dragged this slider up, I was saying take all the dark colors, all the blacks, and make them lighter. And what I'm going to really get from this is just a really washed out photo. It's going to start until it gets all white. But what I'm doing, I'm taking all the dark colors out of it, and I'm making it really, really light. And then when I move this one down, I'm taking all the white out of it, and I'm making all those light gray colors, everything between here, if you cut a line straight across, everything in this area, I'm telling Photoshop, make it darker. Make it whatever it corresponds to straight across from this point. So it gets darker and darker till it gets black. Now the same thing, remember when we started to move, that was our shadows down here, our highlights up here. And now, when we move the mid areas, notice we're starting to lighten the entire photo. And when we move this downward, we'll start to darken the entire photo. So one of the ways that we can use this to fix our photos, use our knowledge here, is contrast. One of the things that we really like to do with curves is to be able to add contrast to the photos. Contrast, by definition, is the difference between the really dark parts of the photo and the really light parts of the photo. So if we can make our darks darker and our lights lighter, then we should have a better contrasted photo. So what do I want to do? Well, remember down here is our shadow area, so I'm going to click on the curve and add a point and drag it down. This is our shadows. If I move it downward, I make everything darker. So I'm, I'm bowing the curve downward. And I'm saying make everything darker. Now, to offset that, because in doing so, I even made, see how the curve starts to dip below? The st imagine the straight line here. That straight line's gone, and it's starting to dip below that straight line, even up here in the highlights. So I made my highlights darker. I don't want to do that, so I click on the curve and I start to move it upward. All right, now let's look at our preview. That's before, and that's after. And that after photo looks a lot nicer, a lot nicer contrast than we had from the before image. And so what we're able to do here with curves, why we get more flexibility, is because I'm able to focus on the shadows down here in this part of the curve, and I'm able to focus on the highlights up here in this part of the curve. So now I'm able to tell Photoshop I want to do two different things with two different areas inside my photo. If you want to give an overall brightening, you could maybe even kind of bow this upward just a little bit. But that's a very cool, uh, quick way that you can start to use curves to fix your photos. And if you look at this curve here, it's got an S shape, and that's what a lot of people will refer to as that classic S-shaped curve. And what it does is it just adds contrast to your photos. So here we talked about the exposure and the tonal type corrections to our photos. Uh, up at the channel menu, you see we use the RGB. In part two of this, we're going to take a look at how we can work with very specific colors here inside of curves and, and what they mean and how we can start to use them to change our photos.